This is a brand new Piopoli Moai SLA 3D printer. I'll run you through what it's like to assemble it, calibrate it, and do your first print. This thing is a Piopoli Moai SLA 3D printer. That means it uses resin, and unlike cheaper DLP-based printers, it uses a laser system with galvos to reflect the laser and cure the resin. Price-wise, it sits in between all of the cheap LCD-based DLP printers and the more expensive, professional-grade Form 1 SLA printers. In time, I'll do a full review of this unit, but today we're going to concentrate on the assembly, calibration, and getting out our first prints. Let's rewind the clock back to when I opened the box. So I have here two quite large boxes and I'm very excited to be opening this. From everything I've seen on the internet so far, I'm expecting this to be an amazing 3D printer. I already have a One How Duplicator 7, so I am familiar with resin printing. So let's get straight into it, unbox and check we have all of the components. So the unboxing is complete. We have all of our metal frame extruded components. We've got all the acrylic ones. We've got things like the build platform, power supply. I can see some tool kits. We have the build surface, safety glasses, power cords, and they've chucked in an Australian plug. Very nice. We have our main assembly for the Z axis. We have this box of electronics here and all of the nuts and bolts are labeled really nicely in special little bags. I'm guessing this one here is the actual laser module. So that and the other expensive looking electronics, I'm gonna move out of the way so I can't possibly knock them over. I've got the instructions open on my computer. So let's turn off this light, turn on our timer and get building. Finished. 14 minutes. I'm definitely getting better at this, but overall I'm still really bad at peeling things off. Some, but not all of the pieces are actually translucent. So hopefully that means I can see inside and see the coolness that is printing once this thing is together. I'm gonna to move all these acrylic panels off out of the way so I can't scratch them. I'm gonna restart this clock and begin the build. Okay, so I completely butchered what should have been a simple job. One bit of advice for you, make sure the screws are in a fair amount so they just slide. If you have them sticking out too much and it's on an angle, it wedges in. And as you saw, I had to get out a rubber mallet and tap things back out and then adjust it and then it slid in perfectly. Is it the kit's fault? Absolutely not. It was my fault and it actually speaks well for the kit because it means all the tolerances are nice and tight. So if things just clear, that's ideal. That'll be a good product when it's finished, but it means you've just got to be extra careful as you put things together. So I just made my first mistake and so far I give the instructions nine out of 10 and that loses the one mark because on some of the pictures I would prefer to see a view zoomed out enough to see the whole printer. It's kind of hard to tell what's next to what in some cases. But what I will say is that there's a beautiful set of detailed instructional build videos. So if you've got the time, watch those and it'll point you through any potential disasters. Checking in at the one hour mark and everything seems to be going quite well so far. Most of the frame is together. There's not really many pieces left here to put on. So I'm guessing most things from this point forward are gonna to be to do with electronics and fairly bits. I've now finished the mechanical section and I'm on to the electronics. We're at one hour and 11 minutes. One hour and 25 minutes in, all of the electronics are bolted to the board, which leaves the big guns, the Galvo unit. Now these are extremely sensitive, so I'm gonna treat it with extreme caution and hopefully I can get it going first time round. I've just taken the protective cover off the Galvo and these things are magnificent. The precision on this is just amazing. You've got these two perfectly polished mirrors and you can see the laser module facing towards them. It's very important that you don't touch them, get any dust, fingerprints, anything like that on them. I'm very excited to be getting this thing into place now. So 
So that is the electronics wired. We're at one hour 44. I'm hoping there's some sort of cable management part to come because I can see there's a lot of cables above the Galvo and laser assembly. And of course that is gonna obstruct the laser from curing the resin accurately. But I'm sure that's to come. Now we're onto doors and outside panels. So most of it is together. We're at two hours and 14 minutes and we're up to cable management. So I'm gonna follow the diagram, get everything tidied up. And then I think apart from the outside panels going on, everything is completely finished. We're gonna follow the diagram to use the cable ties and tidy everything up. And then hopefully we're up to some calibration and it won't be long until we do our first prints. All of the cables are out of the way and I didn't pay too much attention to the image and the instructions. Instead what I did was look from the top and check for line of sight between the Galvo and laser module and the cutout for the build platform. If you can't see any wires in the way then the laser can't hit them and therefore it's good. I'm up to this final step here before calibration and we have this little piece of acrylic that goes above the Galvo. I meant to remove the protective film from both sides and then it goes on and I assume that stops debris from coming down and knocking anything. It says to use silicon gel, which I don't have. It also says you can use tape. So I might fish out one of my old, old Captain Tape skinny rolls and just put a little bit around and then I am done. Now there are some outside panels that aren't put on, but it says not to do those until after calibration. Looking at the clock, we're at two hours 34. So let's say 10 minutes for those panels and we're gonna call the overall assembly time two hours and 45 minutes. Pretty reasonable for a machine like this. So some time has passed since I finished the assembly and that was because I needed to do some research. Now this product is constantly being evolved and improved. There's a strong community behind it and that means the procedures change and therefore there might be multiple pieces of documentation which conflict with each other. So I took the time to get on the internet and find the most up-to-date versions and that's what I've done to calibrate the machine. When you're calibrating, you will need this diagram here, which you need to print out, paying attention to your page size and making sure it is at 100%, not fit to page or scaling up or down or anything like that. The other files that you need are on the SD card. And the first thing I did was run the calibration. So to do that, we insert the vat and place the piece of paper in. There's a front and a back. You've got to make sure you have that aligned. There's a file for finding the center. So what we do is we use the tweezers to avoid getting fingerprints on the silicon layer of the vat and we slide it around until we've got it perfectly aligned with the center and then we double press to cancel that file and load up the next one. The next one attempts to trace a circle to match what's on the piece of paper and fortunately for me mine was pretty much spot on. Apparently you don't need to get it perfect it's more the fact that if your x and y galvos are plugged in the wrong way it's going to show up at this stage. Fine tuning can be done later on. Now at the time of making this video, the method for leveling the bed is a little bit obscure, but I found it really effective. And you start by turning the printer upside down so you can see exactly what's going on. You have a nice access to the nuts on the underside of the vat. So what we do is go to the menu and go to advanced settings. There's a setting there called Z reset position. By default, it's gonna be set as 1877. We put the build platform into place and what we do is temporarily set that as 1880. And what it'll do is home and then go down and compress itself against the vat. From the underside, we then loosen all of the nuts until there's a visual gap between them. And then we wind them back in until it's just touching. The way to measure this is to try and slide a piece of paper and turn it a tiny bit at a time until you creep up and the paper will no longer fit. So then we come back to the advanced menu and we set it back to 1877. And I believe this number corresponds to a distance. So each digit for this number is something like 0.02 of a millimeter. So when we set it to 1880, we had it push flat against it, but in future, it's gonna be a couple of steps off that, creating the tiniest little gap, and that should set up our printer beautifully. Now that we've done all of that, I think it's time to run our first test print. It is winter, I've kept the heater on in the room to make sure it's at least 20 degrees, and I kept one of the bottles of resin near the heater to make sure it's nice and warm, but not too hot. So we're gonna pour it in, and then we'll do our first print. Well, 
as you can see, the test print has been very successful. So I'm gonna take it off, clean it, and put it under the close-up camera, and then we'll put the rest of the panels on and wrap this video up. Well, this ring really did come out perfect first go. Check out the quality on this, the tiny little holes on the top, the details, and isn't 3D printing meant to produce layer lines? Well, you can't even see them on this. I'm super impressed with this so far. Now, of course, this is not a review that is to come. I've got two liters of resin to really put this thing through its paces. This is just an initial impression on assembly, calibration, and first print. So let me give you my thoughts on that. The assembly process was pretty damn good. As I said earlier, I'd give it a nine out of 10. There's a couple of pictures that I found slightly ambiguous, but really, if I wanted to put in the time, I could watch the excellent video series and I would have been able to follow everything as I went. Now, it took me a little bit under three hours. If I wasn't filming, probably would have been about two and a half hours, and that's much shorter than what they quote on their website. So I'm guessing they've refined the build process over time, and now my experience is more indicative of what you can expect as a consumer if you were to buy this printer today. It's worth noting that there's plenty of spares and all of the required tools that I needed for the assembly were all included in the kit. The calibration, once I knew what I was doing, was actually quite fast. Having the files on the SD card and the piece of paper supplied in the box streamlined things a great deal for ensuring the laser and galvos were working correctly. And that tip about turning the printer upside down to do the leveling, that was really, really helpful. After I knew what I was doing and understood the theory, the leveling only took me about five minutes. And as you can tell from this first ring, the result was perfect. So I'm pretty confident in its ability from this point forward. There is a calibration print that you can do that prints a little pillar in each corner. And the idea is you get out some accurate calipers and you measure them and then you do fine adjustments of those nuts to raise and lower the bed as you need to until you get them all uniform. Now behind me here, I have a one how duplicator seven and that brings some pros and cons for me making this video. Now this first print came out perfectly and I didn't have the same success straight away on the one how. So it's hard to judge now that I have experience whether that's down to the printer or whether that's down to me or probably a combination of both. Probably the only thing that's safe to conclude based on my own experience today is that the assembly, calibration and first print on this machine is pretty good out of the box. My initial impressions are great. We'll see if that lasts as I put it through a more detailed review period. So you can look out for that video in future. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.